off from blogging, like stay at home moms doing all this stuff. And I was like, I just had a baby. I would love to stay at home with my baby. What can I do to help me get to where I need to be? Today? Hey, y'all. And welcome to episode time. number 46 of She Thought She Could Podcast. I am so excited to have another interview. Yay, yay, yay. It's been a little wait, but it's here, it's here, it's here. So I had a chance to hop on with my sorority sister, my big sis, Jasmine of Queen Jazz Reigns, and that's Jazz, J-A-Z-Z. I'm so excited for all that this platform is putting into the atmosphere as it relates to women with natural hair, financial freedom, being a mom, a first-time mom, nursing, um, doing the thing and just providing resource and transparency and just awesomeness y'all like I, I can't even explain it in any other way but awesomeness so I am excited without further ado here's the interview if you would like to connect with her beyond this interview uh, the website is queenjazzreigns.com which will be in the show notes also in the show notes will be the links to the instagram and twitter platform so that you can connect with jazz on social media all right yes, here's the interview I want to thank you for your time i am so excited um Hey, listeners, me and Jazz just kind of did this, but the roles were reversed. So this time I get to get all up in her business. So <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> so we're just going to start by having you tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, where are you from? How are you growing up? You know, how does your upbringing shape you? What motivates or inspires you? Just give us a little bit of detail. Feel free to answer what you want and throw away the rest. Okay, well, I guess I will stop by saying thank you for even having me. I feel honored. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I am Jasmine, obviously. Um, I am from Beaufort, South Carolina, small town. Everybody knows everybody. Um, my upbringing, I was raised by my grandmother, and she was strict. So I wasn't allowed to do a lot. Um, I could not go to the 9 o'clock movies, um, parties. It was like a no. Um, I didn't really have a curfew, but um, let me not come home. My mom was growing up, and I might be locked out, like, play with it if I want to. Um, And I did at times, but very strict. So I would say I had a very structured um, upbringing. I was always taught, you know, to work hard and be independent so that you don't have to depend on anybody to give you anything or anything like that. So that kind of helped as well. And it was always book, book, book. So I always had good grades. And um, I guess that kind of shaped me into the person that I am. Um, I really am motivated by being able to see myself, like, make moves kind of, I guess. Okay. Like, seeing progress. That really motivates me to be better. Okay. And then when I think of something, and then it just goes on from there. But I had, I think I had a really good upbringing. I was very spoiled. And since I was raised with my grandmother, um, I was kind of raised like an only child. There's five of us. So I okay. just was just spoiled by my godfather financially anywhere I wanted to go. Which, of course, you know, Walmart made me happy. So, <laughs> Getting something out of right, when you're young. Like my thing. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. That, that okay. was basically my upbringing in a nutshell. Awesome. So, I heard you say that you had, like, good grades because books wasn't a joke. Um, I wasn't playing that. So, I'm sure that probably played a role in what I'm about to ask, but I, I want to hear it from you. Um, what is it that made you choose college after high school and then kind of why did you choose your major? Like, did you know that you were going to major in that when you went there, or did you figure it out when you got there? Or kind of tell us a little bit about that process. Okay. So I decided that I was going to college because I had seen, I saw that my um, older siblings, they went to the military, and I kind of saw that aspect, and I was like, eh, that's kind of like a, that's a little strict, like somebody's still telling you what to do. And since I was – up while well, I was brought up kind of like a strict in a strict household I was like okay I'm going to college and I'm going wild out and I had the good grades to do so so I was just like okay yeah I'm gonna have my freedom go to school have fun live a good life and get my good paying job right after college and all that other stuff that you know we believe 
right after we graduate or whatever. Right. Um, right. <laughs> as far as did I know what I was going to major in, I went to school thinking that I wanted to study law. So I started in political science, and I think after I made my first C, like maybe the second semester of my freshman year, I was like, maybe this isn't for me. <laughs> And so I, like, went to, I don't know what it was called, but what, student services or career services or something. Career services, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and took a test, and I was like, you'd be really good in accounting. I was like, okay, well, I'll try it because I really love numbers. Like, I would sit down and crunch numbers all day and just have fun, like, okay. doing budgets and stuff like that and seeing how much money I have and how much should be there and all that other stuff. I will, I really love doing stuff like that. But do I stick by my budget? I don't. Um, so, yeah. I don't know where the <laughs> disconnect is, but yeah. Right. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't know that I was going to major in accounting, but, uh, and I hated it. Uh, um, it was just like so boring and all that other stuff, but I kind of appreciate it a lot more now that I'm really working in my field. Um, I think for the past couple of years, I've been working in my field, so it's growing on me. But I ultimately, awesome. um, I'm sorry. I ultimately oh, no, decided, like, both of those majors, like the law, um, studying law, political science, and accounting based on the money. So I was like, well, people always need lawyers and people always need accountants. So either way, couldn't I can't go too wrong. So that was another okay. deciding factor. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, it, sounds, it sounds good. It sounds like, it, you know, honestly, it sounds very thoughtful for like an 18 year old to to even consider why they're majoring in it um and it, i mean simply because people make a lot of money or the fact that beyond that you said you know i like numbers so when the test said accounting it didn't make you say oh no not that you know it kind of was parallel um so i heard you say you're in your field so what do you do currently like in your professional role um i'm a staff accountant <clears throat> excuse me i'm a staff accountant so I, I'm trying to figure out if I really want to mention this, but um, I work for a really good company, really great benefits. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and say it. I work for Turner Broadcasting, um, which of course has okay. just become um, Warner Media. We just merged with AT and T. So mm-hmm. um, amazing company. I just I'm, I'm like in love. I feel so spoiled. <laughs> it's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Congratulations. I'm happy um, to hear that, and I'm happy for our listeners to hear that. That um, and I'm sure that prior to you landing that job, you may have done some other things um, that you may have liked or, or didn't like or either one. But needless to say, you got where you wanted to be. Um, so that's really good. That A lot of people hear the kind of negative side of, you know, I went to college, I made it in such and such, and now, you know, I'm doing such and such, and I feel like I wasted my time. So I'm happy to hear that you were able to, you know, align yourself in your field So now we're going to shift gears a little bit, and I want you to tell us a little about Queen Jazz Ring and, you know, why you decided to launch the project, what kind of was your motivation behind it, and just give us a little overview of of what it is. Okay. Excuse me. So Queen Jazz Ring is my brand, I guess I would say. Um, Right now I just have a blog. I'm working on other aspects of it and tweaking it, of course, so that I can make it better. But I wanted to start the vlog because, one, I'd already had a blog for about a year that I just wasn't doing anything with, and I've always loved writing. Um, I remember being little and, like, writing books and things like that and just always wanting to write. And I am a stickler for grammar, so, like, I can just go down a rabbit hole about that, but I will find mistakes on restaurant menus, on coworkers' emails, and I'll cringe at all the grammatical errors. Um, Oh, my gosh. But I just really like writing, so I was like, okay, I want to start a blog. I want to be able to make money on the side because I was on Pinterest, and I love Pinterest. And I just kept seeing people making, you know, like six figures, bringing home $10,000 in a month, from blogging, like stay-at-home moms doing all this stuff. And I was like, I just had a baby. I would love to stay at home with my baby. What can I do to help me get to where I need to be for that? And I, it just kind of aligned because I like writing and there's an opportunity for me to, you know, potentially 
quit my nine to five and just stay at home. Um, and then I love the freedom of blogging because, um, you can be anywhere and blog. You know, you can travel, you can do whatever you need to do and just hop on the computer as long as you have Wi Fi or a hotspot and just do whatever you need to do. So I really like that aspect. I really just want to be free and not really tied to a certain place, not having to, you know, well, I don't have this many days of PTO, I can't take this trip, things like that. I just want to be in more control of my life. Right. So that I can enjoy I love it. that, the freedom. Yeah, that's really good. That's a really good reason um, to kind of kind of tie together, like not just because you want to be away from your nine five, but also because you like writing and you enjoy um, what it is that your brand will represent. So it kind of kind of meets in the middle. So that's that's awesome. That's, I'm really excited for you with that. So I heard you kind you kind of hit on it, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask um, and feel free not to answer if you don't want to, but do you eventually want to be, you know, fully self-employed or do you want this project to remain um, one of those really cool side hustles that you're just able to do alongside your job to help you, like, save or reach travel goals or, you know, save for baby college or something like that? What do you kind of see? And I know it may be early um, in your brand, but what do you, you see down the line? Oh, I'm going for the big bucks. Down the line, this is my job. <laughs> this is my, like, this is my job that I love to do, that I love to do. Like, I would love to replace my nine to five and just do blogging if possible and even branch it off into like a YouTube channel, maybe, um, and other aspects that can bring in money and be monetized. And I just don't want to have to report to somebody at all. Like, I want to be my own boss. Yeah. Goal. So y'all, next time we bring Jazz on the show, she's going to be like, halfway there or all the way there and it's going to be like, girl, you remember back um, in, in 2019 when we was talking about um, me being free? I'm free, so I can't wait for the update yes. because I think that with your, you know, your upbringing and your drive and then you know numbers, so a lot of times people with passion projects kind of get lost in the sauce because they love what they're doing but they don't think of the numbers aspect. I mean, as an accountant, I don't see you just jumping out there when the when the bottom line don't look right <laughs> so no. i think that um <laughs> you will make sure that you are well prepared to make that decision so i'm excited i'm excited so you know where can our listeners find you and um your brand um who is it for like who is the target market of for um lord i can't even talk queen jazz rain and Anything else you you want to share so we can connect with you after this episode? Okay, so I think I forgot to you know give you like <laughs> some information about the blog when I first I think I went down a rabbit hole a little bit, but so Queen Jazz it's Rain cool, cool, cool. is <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just me sharing my experiences basically as a first time mom as you know a female with natural four C hair and as an individual who is wanting to have financial freedom or financial independence. So yes. I kind of just talk about those three topics and just um, do updates on those and kind of hold myself accountable for um, as far as like, my financial independence, as far as my hair growth, and as far as me learning more about experiences as a first-time mom. Um, and I want to help others. Like, I wouldn't be able to help others who may I may be further along than they are, so they can, you know, look at me for advice or anything like that. Um, because I found that I was living a life that everybody else wanted me to live. Like, maybe my family members thought I should do this, so I did it. And I'm really mm -hmm. over that. I'm just not here for that anymore. I'm ready to become <laughs> my own person. Yeah. I have my own child now. Like, I'm just trying to do everything that's in the best interest of her and for that's my family's awesome. future. Yes, um, that is good. It is so, your life. <laughs> thank you, girl. <laughs> um, so to answer your other questions, um, right now on Facebook, you can find me at Queen Jazz Reigns. I have a business page. On Instagram, it's the same thing. You can find me at Queen Jazz Reigns. Um, I am on Pinterest. I am trying to remember Ooh. my name. I'm pretty sure it's Queen Jazz Reigns. I love Pinterest. Pinterest is like, yeah. oh, my gosh. Just, mm. Oh, my gosh. My favorite thing mm. to be on all day. Um, and 
I think those are the the big ones that I'm like those are kind of handling right now. I don't think I'm really okay. I'm not really doing Twitter right now. Um, but okay. yeah, the blog is definitely for you know people who have natural hair. Um, more so people who have type four hair. I can't really speak on you know like type three or anything else like that because that's not my hair type. But yeah, first time moms and anybody who is wanting to learn you know savings tips and things that will help them along the line if they are interested in becoming financially free, too. That's awesome. I I think that that's a really great target market, and I I feel like um, it's it's just going to be so impactful because I think as women of color, I am not a mom, but I I have a passion for, like, moms who are trying to, like, figure it out um, and be open and sharing, like, mommy tips and mommy things and and the things that come along with – like leaving baby to go to work um, and missing oh, some of the things that happen with baby. Um, you, you're you not alone in that, but I think as, as women of color, we've kind of been systematically taught to keep things to ourselves, right? And so yeah. I just respect you so much for being able and willing to just share um, and help. And, Lord, an accountant with natural hair, like, listen, that might be the tagline, like, listen, <laughs> an accountant with nappy hair, okay? And so let me yes. just let you know that we can embrace our natural no matter what our career path is. Um, and she's going to, what is it, type four, right? Type four hair? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, she's going to be helping the type four hair. So, y'all, listen, um, I'm fake natural because I just have a, a low cut. Um, and if it ever becomes unmanageable, I am slapping a little cut right up in the thing. Ah! <laughs> no. I, I don't I don't know what to no. do. But right now I'm almost at my year mark and it's only through. So well yeah, like so we'll, we'll we'll see how this goes. So Jasmine, I want to again I want to thank you for allowing me to interview you and to highlight your brand on my platform. Um I know I have some listeners that fit into your niche, so I wanted to get you on the show. Uh, so you can share a little bit more about your journey and what you have going on. It is so important to highlight people who are getting started because when you're getting started, it is it's, it's like hard, and you you feel like I don't I don't necessarily want to pitch myself to like the big big people because I mean what if they don't want to talk to me? Um, but I think that getting getting your name out there and telling people what you have going on is so dope. Um, Because blogs ain't dead. I don't care what some of the articles say. People read blogs all the time, and they're still popping. Um, I had a mentee that was like, I'm not starting my blog because somebody said they're not cool anymore. I'm like, girl, you better Google people that's making the money on the blog. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe somebody told me that. What? Yeah. Yeah. Girl, people are – don't let people discourage you because people People are trying to kill dreams out here. Okay, like what are what are you starting, my friend? <laughs> what are you starting? <laughs> you cannot kill the like you cannot kill the dream. So I'm just excited for you, and I can't wait to have you back in maybe six to eight months and see you know what the progress is and see how things are going. Mm, so that I'm makes me nervous. To chatting with you. No, don't get nervous. <laughs> nervous and excited. <laughs> yes, yes. Be excited. Don't yes. Be, don't Motivated. be. Yeah, don't be nervous. Yes, be motivated, be encouraged. So when you come back and tell us all the things um, that have happened and transpired and over that time. So I look forward to chatting with you again. Have a good one. Thank you. You do the same. And thank you for having me. <laughs> Wasn't back. that a ball of awesomeness? Like, I just commend Jasmine for her transparency, her self-awareness, her um, willingness to be of support for others as she transitions through this phase. A lot of times people wait until they are out of um, that incubation phase or that learning phase to help. Like Jasmine's daughter is still very young, so her sharing things about, you know, first-time mom stuff is awesome. And she's done so many different things as it relates to this natural hair journey. So she has a lot of advice. So I'm just excited. I'm excited that this can be a platform for me to share with you all, um, as well as myself. I, I don't resonate as much because I don't have children, but with hair and just resources I think that it is important for women to be holistically well and holistically connected to people who are just transparently out here 
trying to figure life out um, and live the life that makes them most happy, not the life that, you know, grandma, mama, cousin, uncle, brother wants you to live, but the life that you truly want to live. So I think that that is amazing and that is to be commended. Um, so Jazz, thank you so much for your time and pres- providing us with some splashes into your journey. Can't wait to bring you back onto the podcast um, in a few months or even a year or so just to see how things have evolved and how much you've learned and grown um, and what the Queen Jazz Reigns platform is doing. So y'all keep up with her. Links to the social networks are all in the show notes. Um, Until next time, keep living, keep loving, keep being amazing. And remember to be authentic in your pursuits of happiness. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't because you can. Whatever you want, it can happen. Until next time, peace out.